Um, let me ask another question. Rob told me that there was a recent discussion of, among the candidates where they were asked, uh, do you believe in God? And correct me if I'm wrong, but five of your candidates said no. Uh, and um, this reminded me of a story uh, th about the difference between Europeans and Americans on the question of God, because in the United States, in general, you would get into a lot of trouble in politics if you answered no uh, to that question. It's remarkable, actually, somebody did a survey of how few politicians, including all the way down in 435 members of Congress, 100 senators, there were only a handful who were willing to say outright they were atheists. Uh, and a French pollster and I were once talking about this. And as many of you know, the, uh, among the, in the wealthy democracies, uh, the United States has the highest rate of church attendance or synagogue attendance on a regular basis. Uh, and the French pollster and I agreed that our American number is probably inflated uh, and the French number is probably lower than it is because Americans felt guilty when they didn't go to church and the French felt guilty when they did uh, go to church. Uh, and so what I am wondering, I want to ask uh, the question, it's a personal question, I'll give you a third option uh, if you would like, rather than ask, uh, do you believe in God? I want to ask, uh, do you believe in God or do you think God is possible? Or are you quite sure there is no God? How many believers uh, are in the room? How many people are, as they would say in the United States, how many will testify uh, to their faith here? That's, that's a very substantial number. That might explain why you came to a discussion on faith and uh, uh, politics. Uh, how many are in the middle, kind of uh, think they might be there, but not sure, or she? Um, and how many are quite certain that there is no God? Um, so... I would say, help me count here, it's a rather close split, but I would say the non-believers outnumbered the believers uh, with a fairly substantial uh, keeping their options open on the God uh, question. Um, and I, I think what I want to talk about a little at the outset, um, let me ask you a question. Why do you think, before I talk, anybody on any side of this question, why do you think it is that the answer, the political answer in the Netherlands, the politically convenient, correct answer in the Netherlands is so different from the politically convenient or correct answer in the United States. What, what do you think makes us different from the Netherlands or from Europe on this question? Any volunteers on the matter, please. The, but the two of you back there, then we can pass the mic. Uh, well, the way I understand is that it's a clear residue of the Westphalian peace in which a division between faith and politics were an answer to war in general. It, once those two were divided, war would be established in Europe. And if it was not divided, then war would still be possible. So it's seen as something necessary for peace. May I just say, God bless you, because I can't think of very many people in an American audience who would cite the peace of Westphalia. So that's... That's a very interesting answer. It is, it's sort of the, I, I think a, a, a philosopher called Judith Schwarz referred to it as a liberalism of fear. Uh, a fear that if we engage uh, in these questions too much in public, uh, we will end up repeating uh, the religious wars. And so you think that's the, uh, that's the motivation. The person in front of you, that's a very, that's a good theory. Uh, I also think that it's very closely related to the entire Manifest Destiny idea and the American dream and the move westward and the idea that God gave the right to the Americans to be in America. Because, well, that kind of, I think if a politician would step away from that idea that he would be not accepted anymore or not seen as a serious American politician. So without God, most of us wouldn't have a right to be there? Well, that's <laughs> what they believe, right? The, or at least that's what Manifest Destiny said. That's a, that's a very interesting idea. Any, any, any other takers on the difference between uh, Europe or uh, over here? Uh, two, let's do two more, and then I want to sort of offer my answer. That's a good answer, too. Um, I think it has to do with the fact that um, in America you vote for a person. I mean, you choose between Romney and Obama. And I think that we generally vote for the party, or we used to. 
So for us, it doesn't, I think it, is a, it shows character if you're religious in America. And I think here, we don't really mind whether someone's religious or not. So it's about the content of the party and not about the person. Do you think, by the way, inherent in your question, I've had conversations with people, inherent in what you just said is the idea that Dutch politics may be moving more toward a politics of a person. person. Is that what you think I, yes. is happening? It feels like that in this election. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so might that change whether people uh, care about the religious uh, beliefs of their candidate or not? Mm, I don't think so. I think we're really accepting uh, of religion. So I think that doesn't really matter. I think character does matter, but religion, maybe not so much. And then there was one other person right next to you. Yes, sir. I think, uh, I think it's also a set of values that's been disappearing throughout. I mean, you know, when, we, when you look at the Netherlands in the 50s, we had like a system of values that's very ingrained to our po uh, political parties. And that's disappearing right now uh, in 2012 and, well, earlier. And that's something you, uh, if you look to America, they, they still have like, uh, well, the political parties both have changed, but their image is still kind of the same as it used to be in like the, the 50s, I guess. So that's all, uh, also a progression that happened in Europe. Yeah, that's, a, that's interesting. I, I do think, and we can talk about this later, that the two parties have changed quite a lot since... Uh, uh, the 1950s, and in fact, that the two par our two parties were, in some sense, broad coalitions, including quite conservative and quite progressive interests in both parties. And there's been uh, a kind of uh, sorting out. But I, I think your other point is very interesting. And to the lady who talked about character, you're dead on, according to many pollsters, um, because you know, there's a lot of polling that suggests that Americans, whether they are believers themselves or not, but since a majority, a vast majority say they are believers, use religious belief as a test of character on the theory that somebody who is a believer is more likely to cre uh, behave morally uh, in office. One more before I, I go on, because he had an urgent hand up in the size. I think also, I think personally that uh, uh, America believes more in God. I think it is also a matter of the distribution of, uh, of, the, of the rich or of the wealth. I think it is also the, dis I think it's also the distribution of the wealth. I think that uh, religion is in, is in, is in America uh, something as a last resort and not many Americans do have other options that um, sounds like an old Marxist, the opiate of the people uh, analysis. Is that kind of where you're coming yeah. from? The, uh, there, is a, um, uh, there was a great left, uh, left kind of anarchist trade union movement in the United States called the uh, um, Industrial Workers of the World, and they put out a little hymnal of uh, songs, of union songs, and one of them was rooted in that idea where the refrain was, you'll get pie in the sky when you die. And then the next line was, it's a lie. And so that was in that tradition uh, that you are uh, uh, talking about.